No, these were just things that were like commentaries and editorials on. This is my gift to you. <laughs> it's not mine, but I'll use it. <laughs> and you. Um, <laughs> there, there were people that would write commentary on different pieces and there'd be a discussion back and forth. So <laughs> some of these are brought up on this first one. I have no idea what the commentary was about, but this is called I Want Love. I'm playing here and I'm looking over and I'm thinking, you sound perfectly happy. You know, I can't remember the last time he's held me. He has no idea what I'm thinking. He's perfectly content this way. I decided to spend the rest of my life with him. He's my best friend, but I don't know if he loves me. There are two microproses next, and this first one is called Dandelions for a Passing Stranger. Oh, there weren't some flowers in this part of the world at this time for this view in their yard. <laughs> Allow me to read. I love my silly red tricycle. The type that every suburban three-year-old probably had. I would play on my driveway, riding past the evergreen trees, past the white mailbox. But I'd usually turn around before I rode past the gravel and onto the neighbor's driveway and ride back to the security of my own garage. I would sometimes play with the neighbor's drive in the neighbor's driveway since it was on a hill. I would ride atop of their by their maroon-colored garage. Navigate my trusted bicycle around uh, in by the rusty handle, hang onto the uh, hop onto the seat, and then just zoom downhill. But those times were only when I thought no one was at home at their house, and for when I was feeling particularly adventurous. Once I was riding up and down my own driveway, and I saw another little girl walking on the neighbor's yard. I watched her approach my driveway, walked on the edge of the lawn. I was fascinated by this girl. She was new. She was, had a new face to look at. She was a girl with long blonde hair, so different from my own. She came from the lawn behind my house and was walking along the side of my driveway, away from my home. I just watched her walk. When she passed me, I looked over at the neighbor's yard. Our lawn was filled, full of green grass. Theirs was full of dandelions. I reached over to the side of my driveway, got off my tricycle, hopped over the ledge and ran to that neighbor's yard. I picked the dandelion. I quickly ran back to my tricycle. I patiently waited there just where I, it patiently left, waited there just where I left it. I pedaled fiercely on it to the end of my driveway and caught up with the little girl. Still sitting on my tricycle, I looked up at her and when she stopped walking right in front of me. I held up the dandelion. I, <laughs> I, got one little I quickly ran back to my tricycle. Oh, it, oh no, that wasn't the answer. Sorry about that. There was another area. Um, it, it was a three year old. Yeah. Oh, it was you. Oh, that was Sherry. She's my oldest friend. She's two years old. Then she was in front of our at my wedding. And we've gone, you know, we've gone our separate ways with entirely different people. Her husband was the guitarist for my first band, Mouse River Rays, which is cool. And, uh, and one year after I'd moved to Texas, I walking in costume and Halloween on Bourbon Street. And Sherry runs up to me. I'm like, what? Hi. She, she was there for somebody else's bachelorette party. And we stumbled into each other. <laughs> so Ryan, so yeah, amazing. I'm like, we've never been here before. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I'm definitely things. This is uh, the other piece of prose. Oh yeah, is this uh, some part of this is community poetry, which happens on the first Wednesday of every month from 1 to okay. 3 in the afternoon. And anybody is welcome to come up and share poetry or listen because we love it. If you listen and read, you know, 
German Shepherd bit the inside of my leg. I was babysitting two little girls and a dog named Roscoe. I remember being pushed to the floor by the dog. I was on my back, kicking at the dog. It was gnawing on my leg. And I remember thinking, I can't believe a dog named Roscoe has been attacking me. <laughs> and I was thinking that I had to be strong for these two little girls who were watching it all. I couldn't cry. But when I stepped off Scott's motorcycle at 2 a.m. and it burned the calf, um, it burned my calf in the exhaust pipe, I was drunk and he was driving and I was careless when I swung my leg over the back. It didn't even hurt when I did it, but the next day it blistered and peeled. It looked inhuman. I had to bandage it for weeks. It hurt like you wouldn't believe it. Or when I was little, roller skating in my driveway and I fell. My parents yelled at me, did you crack the sidewalk? <laughs> that's not the point. That's what you say to make somebody not cry. Did you crack the sidewalk? Or when I was this one stick my left knee against the wall. Or maybe it was the carpet. When somebody asked me where that scar came from, I tell them I fell. Mm. Or when I was riding my bicycle and I fell on my front yeah. wheel skidded on the gravel. I had to walk home. Blood was dripping down my elbow to my wrist. I remember thinking that the blood looked thick, but that nothing hurt. I sat on a toilet seat cover while my sister cleaned me up. It, it was a small bathroom. I felt like the walls could have fallen in on me at any time. <laughs> Years later, I can still see the dirt under my skin on my elbow. Or when I was five years old, my dad yelled at me for making a mess in the living room when I had Or when I scratched my chin when I had the chicken pox. Point is that scars can be physical, emotional, childhood letters. Scars. This one had letters in response to a poem including the state of the nation, which is so perfect for, for a reading from Coach July, I guess. My phone rang earlier today, and I picked it up and I said, Hello. And the man at the other end said, Hi, is this Janet? And I said, Yes, it is. May I ask who's calling? And he said, Yeah, hi, this is George Washington. I'm sitting here with Jefferson. We just wanted to tell you a few things. And I said, uh, uh, Why me? And he said, Excuse me. I believe I said I was the one that wanted to do the talking. God, there's a problem with Americans nowadays. They're so damn rude. And I said, You know, you really didn't have to use language like that. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been dead for so long. I lose all control of my manners. Well, anyway, we just wanted to tell you some stuff. Now, you know that we really didn't have much of an idea of what we were doing when we were starting this country here. But we didn't have much experience in creating bodies of power. So I can understand how our Constitution could be misconstrued. There's going to be more. And then he put in a dramatic pause. <laughs> And he said, well, we said that people had a right to bear arms. You meant to protect yourself from a government gone wrong, and that's why you can kill an innocent person for $20 cash. And more, we said freedom of religion, we included the separation of church and state, because freedom of religion could also mean freedom from religion. And when we said freedom of speech, uh, we had no idea you'd be burning a flag or painting pictures of Christ dosed in urine or, or, or photographing people with whips up their respective anatomies. But, well, 
I guess we've got to grin and bear it. Because we banned that, the next thing we'll ban is books, so we can't have that. And I said, but there are schools that have books banned, George. And he said, oh. Mm. And speaking of, Ben Franklin's book. Oh, yeah. This one, this is two more from the beginning of this book for people who just shown up. Um, or she's a CCD with saddle stitch and it says online if you want to have something done as a book about snow and somebody just asked to have volume well, 79 May 1996 the CCD redone as a book and it was just released today so we posted up on Facebook this afternoon but it's actually online you can get it anytime and these are from the letters to the editor section one of two remaining poems this one the first one's called People's Rights Misunderstood I had a dream the other night. I was walking to the street in the city, and a man came up to me, a skinny man. He, he lost his hair. And he walked up right up to me, and he told me, no one cares anymore. And he took my hand, and he asked me to care about him. I'm not supposed to be like this, he said. I, I'm not homeless, you know. I, I have AIDS. And I wanted to tell him that someone did care, that he didn't have to die alone. But you know how sometimes you, can do, you can't do things in your dream no matter how hard you try? Well, my mouth was open. It was wide open. But no words were coming out. You know, I'm afraid to go to sleep tonight. I'm afraid a pregnant woman is going to come up to me in a dream and ask me for a hunger. <laughs> and I'll tell her there has to be a better way. And she'll say, this is the way she chooses. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid a woman will come to me and tell me she doesn't want to live because she's just been raped and her world doesn't make sense anymore. And I'll tell her that she can make it, that one in three women are raped in their lifetimes and they all make it. And besides, the world doesn't make sense to anyone. And she'll say that doesn't make her feel any better. <laughs> And I'm afraid that I won't be able to go down that street in that city again without a look of a Quentin Tarantino movie where everyone's pointing guns at each other. Yes, Mr. NRA, you are so right. I feel so much safer knowing everyone has a gun and that there are more gun shops than gas stations and that everyone is so willing to do the killing. And I hate to say this after I read this, I love Quentin Tarantino movies. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do! So I know. But I like them. But that's just me. Because we all like to appreciate the violence. Okay. Well, you're the weirdo. Yeah. No. <laughs> you and your sister. <laughs> you're the weirdo. It's, it looks like this. I think the batter, I think the thing in the battery was broken. Um, or on the car. Yeah, it's in. And this is the last one. And it's a very good statement to piece. And it's called the Carpet Factory, the Shoes. I heard a story today about a little boy, one of many who was enslaved by his country in <laughs> One of many who was enslaved in his country by child labor. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. It was the beginning, so I'm just going to start this one for the I heard a story today about a little boy, one of many who was enslaved by his country in child labor. In this case, he was working at a carpet factory. He managed to escape. He told a story to the world. He was a hero at 10. We got it. Yeah, we did But the people from the factory held a grudge. And today I heard that the little boy was shot and killed on the street. He was 12. And he complains to me when I buy shoes that are made in China. And now I have to think, did somebody have to die for these? Will somebody have to die for these? <laughs> Very good. Okay. All right. Good. Or, yes. oh, we